okay trying to get some customers out the way I'm getting down I'm getting down there right uh, this was a local customers uh, not one that was shipped in this was a local customers Brown and Eagle mark three uh, I took it on because he was local and he was nice so uh, and it was to receive cutting out on a brown and gold Nico mark three so we took it on and went inside of it uh, had old caps in it so it was recapped it looked like a nightmare when we uh, first went inside and saw the caps on it so uh, first thing we did was uh, put in um, normal electrolytics the um, can cap under there has been bypassed can cap is left in for looks uh, but it's no longer hooked up at all uh, some of the common problems with the mark 3 are related to the power supply on it um, looking at the schematic here I kind of yellowed some of the things that are the common problems this is the high voltage power supply it uses a voltage doubler with the uh, two diodes here which is actually in one case that uh, PD 154 where are you come on camera there you are that there is just two diodes in one case uh, if that goes bad you can replace that with um, you know a couple of um, thousand volt one amp or more diodes which are like a nickel or a dime each now and that will work even better uh, than that old um, two diode unit that's in it. Uh, there's nothing special about it. Uh, that it just puts two diodes in one um, case, you know, connected together. That's all that PD 154 is. I think that's rated at about um, 500 volts at 500 milliamps or half an amp, I think. And if you put in some, you know, thousand volt one amp or two amp or they got three six ten twenty amps out now but that's overkill but even replace it with a one amp you're you know doubling the uh amount of current and voltage that it can handle so you know if that goes out which they do i'd recommend just replacing that with two diodes up underneath there is that um 4.7 ohm yellow violet gold uh, 2 watt brown resistor there is a 2 watt uh, dropping resistor or surge resistor you know I've talked about surge resistors on amps uh, this is just basically a surge resistor for the brown and you just uh, first turn it on that's before the diodes that takes that initial surge while the caps um, charge up you know 4.7 ohm is almost a dead short but it's enough to to take a little bit of the load off the surge when you turn it on that goes bad so check that um, also going along the schematic here up here you got the electrolytic capacitors um, in series with that voltage doubler um, one of them is the can one of them is not the can there then you have those go bad they short out once those short if you don't replace your capacitors they short the diodes can't you know um, work into a dead short so the diodes short and then luckily they have that surge resistor in there and that usually um, take the surge instead of taking out the transformer if they didn't have that um, surge resistor in there then it would probably take out the transformer when people go to bypass and stuff you know to get more watts well I guess you don't need that on a receiver so never mind but on a transmitter or amplifier people bypass the surge you know uh, resistors like this you know get a couple more volts get one more watt and they're like look at me go I, I, I fixed it you know I got more watts out of it yeah you just took out you know a lot of the protection devices when something happened but anyway getting back on point um, there's another dropping resistor um, R34B and then another cap um, that drops you know some of that voltage down you know for the received level um, and then it's filtered again and that's that big cylind cylinder cylindrical uh, some words I have a hard time pronouncing right um, so anyway um, that cylindrical 
uh, resistor right there that's actually two resistors in one body just like the uh, diode was two diodes in one one unit one body uh, all that is is two resistors in one unit one of them is at that R34B that 250 ohm 4 watt you know dropping resistor and then it goes up here to R34 the 1K 16 watt that's the other side of that um, resistor that goes bad opens up you resistors usually open they don't really short um, they open or go high um, if you have that you're not going to have the voltage you're supposed to have so check your voltage the other um, cylindrical resistor is that one R33 to the left the left one there and that also is a dropping resistor that goes over here to the Zener diode. Sometimes that resistor opens or goes high and it doesn't um, provide enough power for that um, Zener diode to kick in and regulate it. And also that Zener diode there, um, that bad boy uh, goes bad a lot. Um, I've seen them go so. That Zener diode is a, uh, what was that, 150 volt, 100 volt, 100 volt. Yep, 100 volt on the schematic there. So that drops at um, 230 volts or whatever coming in through the dropping resistor into the Zener. So you got 100 volts there. Uh, a big check or easy check is to check your um, 100 volts um, right at the Zener. So a lot of problems with the uh, Brownings is something in that power supply, the dropping resistors, the Zener diode, the uh, dual diode, more dropping resistor. Common problems with the uh, with the Brownings using that voltage doubler and the uh, dropping resistor. Uh, another common problem with the receive here is it uses. Um, let's start with the schematic two. New Vista, uh, small little, uh, um, uh, small little tubes, little tongue tie. Excuse me, I'm tired, and I told you I'm not feeling that good. Um, so the two small tubes here, six DS4s in series. Um, these go bad. They also have uh, very small pins. And those pins, you know, 50-year-old radio, they get corroded. They don't get contact. They're both in series. And they're your first um, end of your receive. And if that goes, it's going to cut out your receive. And on this one, um, it had all that. It had weak tubes. The front end of it, you know, had weak tubes. And on the new vistas, the pins were bad, so we replace um, both the new vistas. And since they're in series, you want to do a match pair uh, with those tubes. New vistas are not expensive, so um, fairly easy to find. Uh, good new old stock ones, um, and replace those in um, series match pair. One of the other things with this one that I haven't seen too much is that choke right there, L2, was burned up which is that green choke come on camera there it is and we don't want to zoom in too much uh, camera goes fuzzy but that green choke right there that's the front end uh, it goes part of the front end to that choke there and like that choke was burnt um, so it was replaced the vistas replaced um, one other uh, kind of got you about this radio is that there um, tunes the crystal. There's the crystal right here. And that there tuner over there L3 or A140 and here's the uh, crystal over here. That tuner uh, tunes the crystal. And you want to tune that according to the manual or the SAMs. There's a spe specific way and a specific voltage to uh, tune that. What happens is people are tuned that for max receive and that'll work fine for a while but you go off channel or you know uh, cold or hot 
and since you got it tuned for max it'll cut out because it's not tuned correctly so if you're gonna um, tune the receiver do that one by the manual or by the SAMS it has the correct way of actually tuning that um, tuner for that crystal there don't tune that for max receive like people do they get their golden screwdriver and hey, they turn everything up for max and then you know two days later they're like it's not working um, on this one specifically um, some of the other front end tubes um, I believe that one's on the front end 12 um, AT7 and even in the IF a couple of the 6BA6's along the uh, strip down here were also uh, weak and bad and leaking so we replaced a couple of them the front end tubes uh, replaced that uh, choke aligned that one correctly actually aligned the whole radio replaced a few caps and the way it went uh, we were going to play with the uh, transmitter to see what was happening in it, but we opened up that transmitter and um, it had so many mods. It's got a nice dial -a watt in it, but um, uh, with the voltage regulator, I'm like, oh, nope, I'm not trying to uh, trace all that. Transmitter works um, just to receive was um, cutting in and out and weak, so we got the receive going and we buttoned up the transmitter, so we're not going to talk about that today. So basically that's gonna be it on this uh, mark three customers you know it's been on quite a while uh, receives like it's supposed to short ping cap in it normally if your ping is working and sounding good that's a pretty good indication that the uh, radio is working uh, okay also on the receive if your spot is spotting real good and real strong that's usually an indication that the uh, receive is working um, not necessarily the transmitter because the um, spot doesn't apply full power to the transmitter just a little bit over to the receive so the receive can calibrate but anyway oh one more thing I missed I wanted to talk about you can run a receiver for test purposes or if you want to run it you know just stand alone meaning by itself without the uh, mark 3 transmitter by running a jumper off the two red wires there pins 4 and 5 it almost looked like an optical illusion with the camera but um, the red wire on the bottom actually goes to this um, same point as that um, big resistor there and then the red wire on top uh, you can run a jumper off there all pins 4 and 5 in the schematic if I can get it in there which basically uh, takes part of the voltage coming um, off the power supply and over to the um, plug going out and it takes you know some of the voltages and it and it routes them over to the transmitter goes to a relay on the transmitter and then back into the receiver so when that relay is not keyed up on the transmitter it's allowing the voltage to go around and out to the transmitter and back to the receiver then when you key down it removes that voltage that goes to the outside of that which is actually pin 5 there removes that when you key that relay key the transmitter and one of the caps the ping caps keeps that voltage active for you know a second or two or however long the ping is and that's what happens when you ping that the capacitor for the king ping cap is holding on to that voltage for a minute till it discharges and and that's your ping but anyway if you want to do the receiver by itself you can run a jumper off pins four and five which are the two red wires or that resistor on the bottom and then the red wire on top let's run a jumper across there actually when I was working on this um, receiver that's what I did just ran a jumper across it and then you know once I go, got it going I got the uh, transmitter out and uh, hooked it up so Anyway, I was trying to stay to the point. Still got a lot more long with it than I want to. Um, so that's going to be it for this one. I'm, I'm trying to get all the customers out the way. I'm getting to it now. Still not feeling good. All right. That's it. Bye.